Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encuentra la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Park of Life to Travel Show. I'm your host, Harry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Hey, maybe it's even yours, and that's Park of Life to Mexico. That music you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto is the owner of the La Palapa Group of Restaurants. Those are the La Palapa, Puerto Vallarta's oldest restaurant on the famous Los Muertos Beach, and the El Dorado Restaurant and Beach Club right next door. So you can enjoy that fantastic view of the Los Muertos Pier, all lit up at night in beautiful colors, or during the day in its grand splendor for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. This week, we are going back to the Isla Quale. We're going to visit two very special artists, Kika Gomez and Ernesto Garagos. They're going to talk about the cultural center on the island, uh, the progress in the beautification of the Isla Quale, and about their lives as artists in Puerto Vallarta. And keeping with the theme of the island, we're going to be talking with volunteers, Sonny Rossi, and Dr. Mitch Kushner from Amigos de la Isla Quale, the green heart of Puerto Vallarta. That is the group founded by our friend Guy Weeks, who I had on the show a couple months ago. Uh, if you remember, Guy saw how the Isla Quale needed a little bit of help uh, after Hurricane Nora did a number on that island. It was a year ago, uh, last August. And uh, he helped put together a crew that will um, actually, and that is, preserving the last green space in town. Uh, we have news, we have more, so before we get to Kika, Ernesto, Sonny, and Dr. Mitch, let's see what's happening this week in Puerto Vallarta, the 28th of December, 2022. The Malacan is still decorated festively, you know, for the Christmas stuff, they got a huge tree, life-size camels, elephants, mangers, nativity scenes, lights, Gifts, decorations, everything. In fact, uh, the artist who painted that big Katrina Calavera, uh, the one that won the Guinness World Book of Records for the tallest Katrina, uh, her name is Alandra Muka. She also painted a lot of the decorations that you will see or that you are seeing if you're in town uh, that are on the Malacan. And it's a wonderful time of year. High season's full swing. Today, by the way, uh, the 28th of December is the Mexican version of April Fool's Day. It's called Dia de los Inocentes. So uh, don't uh, lend money to anybody. Uh, and uh, if it sounds impossible, then you're likely being pranked. Uh, they even play tricks uh, in newspapers. So take what you read with a grain of salt um, anytime. But especially on the 28th of December in Mexico. Uh, hotel occupancy is really high, 90% this holiday season. And uh, this coming New Year's Eve and New Year's Day celebrations are going to be crowded. It's going to be crazy times. The fireworks shows are going to be spectacular. The tables at your favorite restaurants are going to be hard to get. They're filling up fast. And if you haven't made any reservations, I guess the question is, what are you waiting for? <laughs> uh, get, you know, get, get cracking. Come on. And with the high season and the holiday celebrations always comes uh, another issue, and that is pickpocketers, uh, petty thievery, and crime. And uh, most of the pickpocketers, uh, well, they, they could be anywhere, but they, they hang out at, at easy spots. They hang out at supermarkets, uh, places like Walmart, uh, Lay, uh, Costco. So, you know, if you are thinking about 
you know, going out shopping, you got to start thinking about how you're going to carry your valuables. Are you going to, where are you going to put your identification? Where are you going to keep your money, your credit cards, your cell phone? Uh, are you going to wear a money belt? Do you have a crossbody bag? I mean, what's your plan? Do you have cargo shorts with a with a hundred pockets? What do you do to keep your things safe, right? Um, anyway, and remember, you got to take really, really good care when you enter an ATM or one of those Cajeros, right? Make sure that you know what's going on around you, and don't enter one if it doesn't look safe. Now, speaking of safe, there was an incident. There was a shooting actually. Uh, back on December 3rd on the Malacan extension, it happened in front of the Plaza Mar where the Red Onion is, right in that area there. There's an OXO too, I'm, if you're familiar with that area. Uh, when I first heard about the location, I thought, well, maybe it was a, a drug dealer situation because, you know, that's that's a very active spot for the, uh, the pipe uh, cigar, uh, pipe cocaine hooker dealer dude. Uh, but I have inf- information, you know, inside information that it was actually a domestic dispute. The dude was stabbing at his woman with a knife and, uh, folks at the OXO called the cops. And by the time the cops arrived, the abuser already had pulled a gun out of his fanny pack. It was firing the thing indiscriminately. And according to my source, uh, the police challenged him and he shot one cop in the leg and, of course, after that, he became target practice for the others, and he went down pretty quick uh, after that. Kind of uh, queso suiza, a little Swiss cheese, uh, death by cop. So, anyway, very frightening, seeing as it was um, a very, very busy time of day. It was around 5.30, uh, 6 o'clock in the evening. It's around a little after sunset. Um, and so, yeah, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Uh, I have a picture of a couple cops and a puddle of blood in the show notes if you want to see that. Uh, it's dark, but uh, but you can make it out. Uh, if you want to enjoy a bit of the Wild West without the gunfire, uh, the Charos are coming back to town. They're going to be back the end of, uh, of next month uh, from Vallarta Online, the 11th edition of the 2023 Hacienda Serena International Charo Championship is approaching. Uh, it'll take place from January 31st to February 5th at Arena Vallarta Facilities in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco. Now, uh, Charos, uh, if you don't know, they they are not uh, the, the gal uh, that, that we remember from the 70s. No, no. Was she from the 70s or the 60s? I don't remember, but uh, she, was, she was a lot of fun to watch. But Charos are, are elegant horsemen, and... Uh, and Escaramuzas are uh, are the female version of of charros. They're horsewomen. Uh, they compete and show off their riding skills as well as their very beautiful, talented horses. Uh, their getup is beautiful as well. I mean, the whole thing is just beautiful. It's Mexico. Uh, there's going to be teams actually competing uh, between the United States and Mexico. It's very. It's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, as the championship approaches, we'll be talking about that. But if you're going to be in town during the period of uh, January 31st until the 5th of February, of course, you want to make plans to get out there to Arena Vallarta. I have a link, uh, to the Vallarta online, uh, article in the show notes. I also have a link to uh, Arena Vallarta. Now, Arena Vallarta is located in the flight path. And if you if you take your time and you look out the window when you're flying into Vallarta, if you get a window seat uh, and look down as you're coming in, you'll see the round uh, uh, stadium out there. Uh, it's past Ixtapa and Desamocada. It's, it's in Colonia El Dorado on Carretera Las Palmas. And uh, it's actually very close to uh, a fun little restaurant. It's a big restaurant, actually. It's called Las Cuasuelas. And it's a roadside place which if you're out that way, you got to try it. And uh, they serve authentic Mexican food. And you might, if you stop to eat there, you might be the only tourist actually eating there. Uh, They have a large parking area. uh, But if you come by bus, just let the driver know that you want to get off at Las Casuelas. He'll know exactly where it is. And just be ready to jump off when you get there. 
They are open from 8 to 5, so check them out if you ever get out that way. Uh, by the way, behind that restaurant, there's a little um, little milking area for, for cows. Uh, they have some horses that children can see. There's there's quite a few places around town that are like this. There's that, that one up in Canopy uh, Canopy River. They've got they've got the same thing going on there. Uh, on weekends, they prepare chocolate cow's milk for the kids and uh, uh, traditional paretes paretes. And uh, now you might be asking, uh, that's for for adults, okay? So you, what's a paharete? And now a paharete is a party in a barn early in the mornings when the cows are being milked. That's what a paharete is. It's also the name of the drink that they make out of fresh cow's milk, liquor, chocolate, sugar, and instant coffee. Yep. And we've heard some guests actually talk about their experiences with the stuff. Personally, I, I think I'll pass, especially after reading this article from Mexican News Daily. It reads, having killed 25 people, Jarete is known as the drink of death in Jalisco. Uh, this is by Susie Buchanan, dated uh, June 12, 2020. A cup of Jarete, bottoms up, but beware. Uh, drink made from fresh milk. Chocolate, sugar, and cane alcohol is coming to be known as the drink of death in Jalisco, where 25 people have died and 20 more have been sickened after drinking the concoction known as Pajarete. Uh, Health Minister Fernando Peterson Agragan uh, is asking residents not to consume artisanal drinks because the quality, the purity, and safety of cane alcohol used in the production can't be guaranteed. Family members of Gustavo Chavez Ayana, who died on April 29th at age 61, say he only had one serving of the popular regional beverage before falling ill. He felt his hands grow numb, his body heavy, and he could not see well after drinking it, said his niece, Carolina Chavez. His symptoms were typical of what occurs after drinking alcohol tainted with excessive levels of methanol. Typically used in solvents and antifreeze, methanol can metabolize to formaldehyde and formic acid in the liver and become toxic within a few hours of being ingested. Symptoms included dizziness, blurred vision or blindness, difficulty breathing, seizures, and severe abdominal pain. The Pajarete tradition is popular on ranches in Jalisco, Michoacan, and Guanajuato, where many drink it in the morning for energy. Right. Uh, Many cattle ranchers also produce it for profit, as the market for fresh milk is oversaturated, and the leader of Pajarete, which uses milk as an ingredient, fetches a higher price. The president of Jalisco's Regional Livestock Union, Adalberto Velasco, estimates that hundreds of ranchers across 45 municipalities are dedicated to producing Pajarete, but as deaths mount, their industry may be shut down by authorities. Adulterated liquor, like cane alcohol used in Pajarete, has been responsible for at least 189 deaths in Mexico since May 1st. And I have a link to that article from Mexican News Daily in the show notes. Now, of course, I'm not casting any aspersions on Las Casuelas or any of those other local purveyors of Pajaretes, uh, just want to remind everybody, uh, buyer, hmm, beware. Uh, have you spent any time or visited the restaurant El Set over the years? Well, I'm sorry to say, it's on its way out. Kiss a goodbye. This is from Vallarta in Lina, December 5th. Goodbye, cowboy. Adios, caballero. A historical restaurant closes to make way for progress. The panoramic restaurant El Set, located in the Conscious Chinas area in Puerto Vallarta, closed its doors after nearly 50 years of serving lunch and dinner in its privileged location. In its place, they will build a 14-unit luxury condominium building, so the restaurant will be demolished. Uh, The objects of historical value, such as the old movie camera, which evokes the filming of the movie The Night of the Iguana in that area will be sold 
And uh, they have a question here. They want to know, did you spend any special moments in that restaurant? And if so, they want you to tell them about it. So I have a a link to uh, Vallarta and Lena's uh, Facebook page in the show notes if you want to share. If you want to share with me, that'd be great, too. Um, anyway, check that out over at www.portovertotravelshow.com. I received an email from listener Jeff who asks me, Barry, did you really say you paid $300 to have the taxi driver take you to Mito? Uh, <laughs> so I'm looking at my, I'm scratching my head, and I went back and I listened to the episode of the show, and sure enough, I did say that. Uh, I said he charged me 600 pesos, that's 300 U.S., and what I really meant to say was that's $30 U.S., so totally my bad. I don't. I hate saying that. My mistake. Uh, so you should be paying about six hundred pesos each way uh, to Tehuamixle or to Maito, uh, and that's thirty dollars U.S. each way from El Tuito down to the beaches. That's what you're going to be paying. That's what you should be paying a taxi driver. So my mistake. No, it is not three hundred dollars to get to the beach. I would never go to the beach if it was three hundred dollars. Okay, I'm cheap. Now, speaking of my toe, uh, last week I told you about uh, Debbie and my trip over to uh, the Mito Paradise Club. And I forgot to tell you that uh, our friend Arancia from Babel Bar has moved her Babel Bar to Fernando's place over at El Rinconcito. Can you believe that? I mean, that's pretty cool. If you remember the Babel Bar, the Babel Bar was over on the Isla Quale. And very close to the the cultural center, which we're we're going to be going to really soon. Uh, and now that area, that that restaurant is now an Indian restaurant. It is now open, by the way. But Arantia is in Maito, and I looked over at her menu. And it's a good sized breakfast menu. Uh, she has soups and salads and pastas and seafood dishes for lunch and dinner. And uh, they're open from 8 until 10 every day. So it's a great addition to the Maito food scene and a real good reason to to visit El Rinconcito, I'd say. Anyway, I'm going to be visiting with Arancia when I get back in February. So stay tuned for that. And if you are planning on going down to Maito, say hi to her for me. Uh, Speaking of beautiful beaches, um. How many of you have ever been to a rave? Now, either you love them or you hate them, right? So, well, this coming March uh, is a rave. Uh, You either don't want to miss it or you really, really do want to miss it. It's in Yalapa. It's called the Yalapa Gathering. And it's happening from March 9th through the 12th, where for three days and nights you can enjoy the thump, thump, thump of techno reggaeton music. Uh, here, here is the um, the why, how, and what from uh, the folks at the Yalapa Gathering. Why? Uh, this is a safe space for transformation where you can express yourself and let others do the same. How? Uh, raising vibrations about social, environmental responsibility through expressiveness and unity while dancing in paradise. And what is the what? You might say, well, Yalapa Gathering is a sustainable, intimate congregation focused on music, art, and human awareness. Uh, They request that you bring your own water containers and any single-use plastics that you might need. They don't have them there. Uh, Tickets are now on sale, and uh, you can make your reservations now. And you should, if you are planning on doing that, reserve your accommodations right away. Uh, That is, you know, of course, if this is for you. I personally will be staying miles and miles away from that place. Again, March 9th through the 12th, I have all the information that you will need. You can find it in the show notes. Uh, Now, for over a year now, I've been flying to Puerto Vallarta from Tijuana. And, you know, now that airfares are getting a bit more reasonable, I don't know if you've checked out lately, but... 
let's see here. I finally broke down and I bought a round trip for a 289 nonstop to Vallarta and back. I'll be 12 days beginning uh, February 21st. But, you know, maybe late next year I might fly Mexico's newest, well, not so new airlines. We talked about this a few weeks back when we discussed Mexico's version of the WikiLeaks, the Guacamayo leaks. Remember that? Uh, well, anyway, we had mentioned that it was leaked that AMLO was planning on, you know, having the uh, military run an airline. And yes, here it is from Mexico News Daily. Uh, December 7th, 2022, Mexico state owned commercial airline will begin operations in late 2023. President Lopez Obrador announced Monday during his regular morning press conference. The airline will be run by the Ministry of Defense as part of its airline and tourism firm, Omeca Maya Mexica Airport Railroad and Auxiliary Services Group. (laughs) The Army-run company is also responsible for operating the Maya Train Railroad and the Felipe Angeles International Airport. Uh, The new airline will begin operations in a year. This is the plan for the end of next year along with the operation of the Tren Maya and the appraisal of the Mexican brand, President Lopez Obrador said. The airline will lower the cost of airfare while serving cities that current routes don't frequently reach. According to the president, he added that the country's entire aviation system will be improved. Uh, The name Mexicana comes from the former national airline that ceased operations in 2010. The airline's downfall was marked by corruption and mismanagement, leaving over 8,000 employees without jobs. Uh, President Lopez Obrador has said that the new airline, consisting of a fleet of 10 leased planes, will be staffed by these individuals. The airline will also include the presidential plane, which the president has failed to sell, It'll be used to reward airline workers and their families, he said in November. Uh, Information about the proposed airline was first leaked by the Guacamaya Hacking Group, which infiltrated Sedenia's internal communications and resulted in a breach of millions of emails. The airline's viability has been questioned, as its operating costs could be between 1 billion and 1.8 billion pesos, or around 50 to $90 million. Moreover, it's illegal for a company to operate an airline and an airport simultaneously, although this could possibly be concir- circumvented by presidential decree. There is also doubt that travelers would be willing to fly with a ministry-run airline, given the Armed Forces' record of fatal aviation accidents. Uh, President Lopez Obrador also announced that Sedania will be charged with managing the Chetmal, Palenque, and Campeche airports. The Navy will operate the airport in Ciudad del Carmen. Uh, In the case of Campeche, it will be the Sedania because of the train Maya. And in the case of Ciudad del Carmen, it'll be the Navy because they are in charge of serving the entire sea of Campeche and our country's oil region, the president said. President Lopez Obrador has been widely criticized for his heavy reliance on the military for tasks such as public security and the construction of several key infrastructure projects. Uh, So there I have a link to that article from Mexico News Daily in the show notes. And yes, AMLO has brought in the army for, um, for the airport that he changed plans for. He moved... Uh, one that was already planned in Mexico City to another spot. Uh, he's used them uh, for uh, the Tren Maya. He just just started that. And, uh, you know, the Tren Maya, again, it deserves a whole lot more time than I can give you today. These are all projects that he's been trying to get done uh, before he leaves office in 2024. I will talk more about the Tren Maya next week. But for now, let's get to our guests and to the Vallarta Cultural Center on the Isla Quale and the Amigos de la Isla Quale, the Green Heart of Puerto Vallarta. Uh, Now, several months back, we had Guy Weeks on the show. Guy, a retired teacher from Southern California, got involved uh, in a big way by organizing regular people to do something about 
you know, that upstream part of the Isla Kuala, which was buried in sand after Hurricane Nora came to town. Uh, now, the group just got a huge boost from a very well-established organization in Puerto Vallarta, the Vallarta Garden Club. And here is an announcement and a news release. News release for immediate release, Vallarta Garden Club and Amigos de la Isla Quale Alliance blossoms into a merger. Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, December 7th, 2022, the board of directors of the Vallarta Garden Club and the leadership of the Amigos de la Isla Quale are pleased to announce the groups will be merging as of January 1st, 2023. The Vallarta Garden Club Board President John McKinney will continue leading the board of the combined organization, and Guy Weeks will join the board as head of a permanent Amigos de la Isla Quale subcommittee. Weeks was part of a crew of volunteers who dug the island out from beneath tons of sand left behind after flooding brought by Hurricane Nora in August of 2021. Following the initial cleanup effort, Weeks assembled a core group of volunteers that began organizing and fundraising to restore the plants and the trees that had been decimated by the flood in cooperation with local government authorities, other nonprofit groups, and generous donors. The group also took on several other improvement projects, including security lighting, erosion management, establishing new planter beds, and building a children's playground. Dozens of volunteers, including Vallarta Garden Club members, contributed sweat equity into the work and revitalized the Isla. In addition, the Vallarta Garden Club board allocated funding to the project to purchase plants, soil, fertilizer, and other supplies. We have been honored to support and become friends with the Amigos de la Isla Quale since March of 2022, joining together to care for this green jewel for the long-term was an easy decision for both groups, said McKinney. In 2020, the Vallarta Garden Club decided to focus their volunteer work and contributions on community projects where there is real need and a local commitment to care for the planting. And last year, the club built a garden for the Vallarta Food Bank, which serves the hungry across the entire Banderas Bay community. Uh, After several conversations with Guy and other leaders, everyone agreed that it made perfect sense for the Isla Quale to become an ongoing project of the club. In addition to helping complete the maintenance of Isla Gardens, the Vallarta Garden Club will soon begin a landscaping project for the new Vallarta School for Girls in Cinco de Diciembre. Uh, The club also will continue to maintain the boxes of Bougainvillea and other flowering plants in the tourist areas of town uh, with the help of the city, Weeks said. Uh, The Garden Club has been beautifying Vallarta for more than a decade. They're an established nonprofit with a tremendous reputation. As the Amigos of Isla Quale's efforts began to expand, it just made sense to become a special project of the club. This way, we can devote the majority of our effort to doing what we do best, improving and protecting the last green space in the heart of Vallarta, and less effort on administrative tasks. So... Looks like a match made in heaven. What great news for both groups and great exposure, actually, for both groups. And uh, this week, I actually want to introduce you to two expat volunteers, uh, Sonny Rossi and Mitch Kutschner, and also to two very special artists who teach and who organize classes on the Isla over at the, the Cultural Center and uh, who are actually volunteers as well. Uh, and who are local artists and muralists for hire. So I was invited by Kika and Ernesto uh, to join in after a planning meeting for the Amigos de la Isla Quale. They were meeting over at El Granero, which is, if you don't remember, it's the sister restaurant to the Los Muertos Brewing Company. Uh, We've been to both places with the podcast, haven't we? Yes, we have. Uh, El Granero is on Francisco Imadero 333. It is in the Emiliano Zapata neighborhood of Puerto Vallarta. It's not far from the cultural center. So let's go right now. Let's go to this gastro pub. Let's go to El Granero at Madero 333 for some beer, some pizza, and some good conversation with 
Sonny Rossi and Dr. Mitch Kushner. Uh, we talked about how they got involved in beautifying the island and how you can too. Um, volunteers with Amigos de la Isla Quale, the Green Heart of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. All right, Sonny, Mitch, thanks for coming on the show. Thank Gracias. you. Uh, all right, so Sonny, where are you from? Originally? Yeah. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, all right. And uh, how'd, you, how'd you get to Puerto Vallarta? My husband decided to retire early. We were heading to Portugal. COVID hit. We had our airline tickets. We couldn't get our visas. So we decided to come down here for a couple months just to hang out. And How, we fell in love. Did, have you, was it your first time in Vallarta? We had been here one day on a cruise ship about nine years oh, ago. Oh, that's always enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what did it. Ah. Uh, all right. So you decided then to, did, did you buy a place or are you renting? We're renting right now, but yeah. we love what we have. Okay. Excellent. You, have you gotten your, uh, your residency and stuff? We did. All right. Did you get the special Temporary. COVID residency? Yes, we did. Uh, you are so fact. smart. You are so smart. Uh, Mitch, where are you from? Originally New York. Yeah. And spent spent most of my uh, time in Southern California. Oh, excellent. Smart man. <laughs> Smart move. Where, where in Southern California were you? Most primarily Long Beach. Long Beach. For a long time. All right, all right. So you like, you like the water. Yes. All right. Excellent. And then what brought you to Puerto Vallarta? Well, I came to Puerto Vallarta uh, over 40 years ago. No way. Seriously. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're like uh, pre-80s. Yes. Okay. All Actually, right. mid seventies. Yeah. Wow. All right. You're and, the. You're... Uh, I visited for the first time. Actually, I started. I'm a retired physician. I started medical school in Guadalajara. Ah, now that's so how you many knew Americans Puerto Vallarta in the mid seventies. Yeah. So we used to come for the weekends to Puerto Vallarta, and. Uh, it was beautiful. It's still beautiful, but it's changed quite a bit. <laughs> it has. It has. But yeah. for some reason, people still want to come yes. here. So yes. there must be some magic. There's some magic. Some yeah. magic. Definitely. Yeah. Um, now, we have you here because uh, you both uh, lo- are, are, are loving the island, okay? You're, you're, you're spreading the love on the island. So what happened? What, what was it, Sonny? What, what got you going to... Uh, we have our dogs down here, and plus a rescue, and we would walk from uh, Oscars at the beach, walk all the way down, make the roundabout on the island where the cultural center is, and then walk all the way back. And Hurricane Nora had hit, and it was closely after that time that we were walking through and saw all the sand everywhere, and we were crunching through the sand and through some trees, and this big guy came out at us, whose name also was Guy, and he said, hey, what are you guys doing? And I said, we're enjoying this beautiful space. And he said, do you know anything about plants? And I said, yes, I do. I do know a little bit. We had, you know, a few acres back at home, and he says, well, I'm looking for somebody to help me with plants. And I said, well, I might be able to get sink my teeth into that. Call me and let me know. And we became fresh Facebook friends. I went home that night and I said to my husband, be careful what you wish for. Ah, uh, because you had Because that was one thing I had do. missed coming oh, down here, to, oh, was gardening. my own gardening. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. But you know there's the Vallarta Garden Club out there. You do know that. We do know, know that. that. Yeah. We do know that. All right. So, wow. Well, so now you, you might even have two jobs. So, but anyway, so you helped. Guy, guy basically accosted you on the island. He did. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> said, here we go. Uh, you, I know, are, are, are a neighbor of Guy, right? Yes. So I bought Mitch, a house. Mitch, you. Yes. Mitch, you are a neighbor of Guy. Yeah. Yes, I am. And I bought a house right at the top of the bridge, Gringo Gulch Bridge, that faces the river seven years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, I've seen the changes over the seven years. That bridge had just been built because I had on a prior trip I hadn't even seen it before. Oh, it was really? beautiful. Yeah. And all the lights were working all the way, all those little lights in the bridge all the way to the top. Uh-huh. And over the years I saw little by little, you know, I really wanna do something. The government is gonna restore these lights. It's dangerous at night coming back. We need to, to do something, and overall, the whole island. Yeah. yeah. So you're referring to the Iguana Bridge, right? The yes. one that comes from where you're living that actually... Down up, to up in, uh, the island. Yeah, and to Gringo the Gulch to the Cultural, island. Yeah. 
Yeah, very good. Yes, and so you, right now there is, there are lights, right? I mean, it's like almost almost like magic, right? Unfortunately, well, no, no. Unfortunately, here he comes. Did well, someone steal the last, them? In the last yes. week, ah. they've been stolen again, second oh, no. time. Oh, oh, no. Twice Solar more. lights, solar yeah. lights that we put in. Yeah, yeah. So we're almost back to square one, but we'll get there. You'll yep. get there. You'll get there. Persistency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Glue. They were they were glued. Yeah, they they were glued, cemented. They unfortunately they didn't want to break the tile to drill in. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I. It's going to be. They're, be, they're being pried it'll, off. It'll, yeah, yeah, it'll be a it'll be a fight, right? It'll be See, kind of a little bit of a. It is until it's, we have the uh, policia that are. Um, in charge of trying to catch them now, so we'll see. There's right. a reward. Well, cool. well, cool. Yeah, just set up some cool little cameras. Yeah, yeah. it'll happen. He's you know? going to come out and dressed in black and hang no, out there at two thirty no, in the morning. No, don't do it, Mitch. Don't do it, brother. I love you. Don't do it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what is going currently right now? What's going on on the island? Uh, uh, plantings, more and more plantings. Um, we're, you know, it was daunting at first, and we just started in small spaces and created what we call pods and started working one pot at an, up to, from another. They are, those land tracks are owned by trustees, so you can't just go wherever you want to go and do what you want to do. You have to kind of um, be cognizant of the Mexicana culture and the polit- politics. And so Ernesto has been very good at helping us navigate through those. And little by little, a lot of the trustees and the politicos have understood what we're trying to do, that it is in the best interest of the Mexicanas. We're not just coming in and putting in whatever we want. We're in cognizant of the, the natural beauty and the fact of uh, the type of plants that grow there and in Me- Mexico, which is what we're trying to keep um, the cultural, the culture the same. And uh, it's working. So now we're actually, we're very proud to say of all, all the plants we've put down, which I think have been, gosh, I want to say... I bet you it's over $20,000 worth of plants that have gone down. I don't believe more than one that I'm aware of has been stolen. Oh, wow. And everybody, all the, all the locals, and especially the expats, would come through and say, you're planting these? They'll be gone tomorrow. They'll, come, they'll pull them up and put them in a wheelbarrow, and they'll be gone. Well, I think because they see us all working so hard, and we incorporate the locals that are around, the homeless people are getting a job, they're working with us, helping to plant that everybody sees we're working hard, and I think they appreciate that. Yeah, well, it's certainly, it's, it's night and day, you mm-hmm. know. So, but obviously, since last, the end of last August, when it was swamped until, like, mm-hmm. today, when you walk down and, like, it's green, you know. Right. It was like, ah, oh, yeah. it's green. A lot and, to do still, but it's really coming along. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I know that you had planned a, uh, like, a playground kind of a thing yes. area. Yes. Is that, that's coming? That's still coming along, a children's playground. Yeah. Um, we have the, the island used to be called Isla de los Niños years ago. You know, you learn the history, so uh, that's a big focus to bring a, a nice playground back there and have more families and kids. Yeah. Enjoy. We've had a couple um, 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 company, not companies, uh, we have some potential people that donors. Are potential donors that are interested in possibly donating towards the children's playground, which will be great. If that comes through. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Any other big plans um, other than that? We would just like uh, for it to be. It's a beautiful green space, and we would like more. Uh, not only the tur- we would like more of the Mexicans who live in right. the patas saladas. So many of them don't ever come don't even know the island exists it's a little tucked away there yeah Yeah. and it's such a special place and we would like to open up awareness you know so we also Ernesto and Kika are very much into the the environment and you know all the plants we're trying to keep native plants and we're trying to bring back uh, more of the native birds by removing peacefully some of the cats that have overrun Mm -hmm. some people call it Cat, Cat Island. Island. Cat yeah. Island, yeah. yeah. Ernesto and I discussed that. In, uh, discussed when that. We but were that's changing, too. Yeah, there's yeah. more and more interest in the public. We had over 50 students there on fr- Friday morning from, what was the high school? Arcos. Arcos, Arcos uh, High School. Uh, and we uh, taught, I took 20 of them on and taught them how to, you know, replant and plant and how the plants can propagate and, 
And, you know, Ernesto and Kiko took the other third of the, you know, two thirds of the group and did what they needed to do. So there was a lot of interest in doing that. Now they've decided they want to do that once a month. Oh, this wow. is what we're looking for. And guys planted a grass area that we're going to have picnic tables and a water fountain there. Uh, we're going to do a Frida secret garden, much like we have the John Houston um, garden. We're going to do something that's uh, just for Frida and some of her favorite flowers and plants in an area. So it's some big plans, little by little, though. All right. What was Frida Kahlo's favorite flower? I don't know yet. I'm researching well, that. Well, come on. Look at, oh, I'm going to assume. Just, you check out her <laughs> hair all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know either, so yeah. I just thought I'd ask, you know, <laughs> just to cause trouble. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's do uh, let's do a quick little. I, I want to do a quick little uh, round of. Uh, this is like the bonus round where we talk about food. Okay, I'm gonna just. I'm leaving the garden right now. Okay. okay. What's your favorite breakfast place, Sunny? Do you eat breakfast? Not really. All right. But I would say the first thing that comes to mind is um, Freddie Toucans. Yeah. Okay. Freddie's come. To, well, of course, Freddie's comes to mind. Yeah. He's been there forever. Yeah. Usually we're yogurt and berries in the morning. Yeah. I Well, yeah. you know, I ask people that and nobody, nobody eats breakfast anymore. Yeah. So it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, we just they, really don't. They used to say that you have to start every day with breakfast. And nobody listens anymore to, you know, nope. what people say. Mitch, what's your favorite breakfast I'd spot? I hate to highlight one when I go to so many. Don't don't highlight one. So say multiple. Sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, don't, so don't hold back. right in our neighborhood, I just walk down the bridge. I go to Soko's place. Huh? I go to the Vallarta factory. I go to Mi... What's it called? Mi Casa? Or? Mi Cafe. Uh, and anything that's real close by. See, Mitch uh, lives next to all the really good <laughs> breakfast spots. You know, Mitch found the neighborhood, yeah. and there he goes. Of course, those all popped up afterwards, but, I mean, you know. We like the what do you like? Mo- what do you like best about Soko's? What do you, what do you, what do you order when you go there? I always order a Spanish tortilla, tortilla español. Have you ever had one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell everybody. Come yeah. on. Don't, yeah, just because delicious. I've had one doesn't mean you can't explain what it is. Come on. You know, I, I, I think it's mostly potato and egg and cheese, flat, like shaped like a, a thick, like a big flat pancake, tortilla. right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well. All With right. onions. You, yeah, and they do it good. They do a good job there. Have you eaten there? No. Um, no. Yeah. Yes, I have, but I haven't had the but I haven't had the Española. Yeah. I haven't had that yet. Well, next time you have to. Have I that. guess I have to. And have then that. Factory is known and has great coffee. Yeah. Yes. I can't duplicate and their chocolate. coffee. I try. I <laughs> buy their coffee. I have coffee makers, but it never comes out the same. Oh uh, yeah. Well, you know they're they have something that they're not letting on. They say yeah. they're roasting, which uh. I'm not doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the okay, yeah. Uh, Sunny. What about? What about lunch? What's your favorite lunch spot? You have like a hole in the wall spot? You know, I don't really have a hole in the wall because we're frequently walking our dogs. I look for places that are going to be dog friendly. Oh, yeah. So, and that are, you know, interesting. We'll let the dogs hang out. So we do like, we go to Chocolate Factory with the dogs. Oscars over on the side of the beach because they have great tile floors. Yeah. Hardly anybody's ever there yeah, for lunch. Yeah, no, it's always empty. How do they make we any can, money? I, we don't know. We're afraid to ask. I know they have parties. Yeah, so we're, we're there quite often. River Cafe, so we're there quite often. So these are all dog-friendly They're places. They're all dog-friendly. Come on, rattle off some Blue more dog-friendly spots. Blue shrimp is dog-friendly, although people think that's expensive, but they're really good to us. Um, I else, heard honey? that I heard Coco's from somebody, Kitchen. I heard from somebody that also the breakfast there. over at at Blue Shrimp is actually very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. So and so Coco's. Yeah. Again, with us having three dogs, it's nice to have people say, "Come on in." Yeah. So. All right. Nice. Okay. So those are all dog friendly places. You keep that in mind. Just keep them off the tables, okay? Yeah. Please, just keep <laughs> them off the tables. God. Anyway, uh, Mitch. Breakfast. I'm mean, lunch. Lunch. Lunch place. I'll, I'll try to skip it. Do you? Yeah. Because yeah, saving room for the, the big one. For the, for the big meal. All right. So every what time about I see you though, you're heading out to lunch. Lunch or dinner? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm, it's at noon. <laughs> I'm always out to lunch. Where do you go to? Where do you go for dinner, Mitch? Oh, I. I go all like, over. What, what, where would you go? Like, take someone for a nice fancy meal. Oh, for a nice fancy meal? Yeah. yeah. Like La Capella. La Capella. First thing yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, you were gonna say that too, Sonny. Yeah, Man. for a fancy place, La Capella or yeah. Cafe de Artiste, uh, Madalena. Those yeah. are the nice ones. Did you say Madalena? Yeah. What? Tell me about Madalena. 
La Maddalena was one of the first places we went that was the fancy spot when yeah. we first got here. And I took my husband for a surprise. I'd already been with a girlfriend for lunch. And there's like five waiters for every table. So you have to kind of get used and pass that, too. Yeah. But, um, but they bring out the big slabs of beef on a big board that's about half the size of this table for you to pick your meat for the night. Um, they do all of that. You, food's incredible. The wait staff's fun. Um, Robert was playing with one of the waiters because they like everything precisely placed. And he moved his pepper over to one side, and the waiter came over and moved the pepper back. So then, so then he turned around and moved the pepper back again, and so they were playing back and forth with the pepper. But as long, long, like long as you can play yeah. around with it, it's pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. yeah, you were just messing and with them, weren't for, you? Come um, on, Robert. You were, right? Happy birthday or for anniversary, they bring out a little cart that has churros and then um, fried fried Oreos with the, with the, what do you call those? Churros? No, the things that light up. Oh, oh yeah, a big, yeah, with a with the fireworks. The fireworks come out, and yeah, so they like bring out this cart with there. churros and the fried Oreos, and it's pretty spectacular. That sounds very good. Yes. Plus, is, they, is it an Argentinian? Plus, place? they have it, it's, it's an eighty it? foot big screen TV in there. Is it a is it an Argentinian place or is it no a, no, no, no? But it's across from the Argentinian. Okay, there house. is an Argentinian place there. Yeah. There is. Okay. Steakhouse. But this but this is this is a different thing. They come. They they're showing you the the steaks, and yeah. they say you yeah. pick what you want. And yep. Okay, pretty, I've never been there. Fun. I guess I gotta go. I gotta it's go. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, if you had a word of advice for a first-time traveler coming to Puerto Vallarta, other than you know joining up with uh, IslaIsland.org, uh, what would you what would you say? Open your heart. Don't be shy, because this place, this town, has so many uh, well-meaning and and giving people that if you wish to have a vibrant life, this is the place to come. Nice. Mitch, what would you say? I would tell them to go to another town in Mexico (laughs) because personally... It's growing too fast, too much, and that's what I would tell you. Of course you would. I love you, Mitch. You're great. You're great, brother. All right. Uh, Is there anything that I left out about uh, about Isla... uh, Islaquale.org. i got to get it right, right. Islaquale.org. You can find it over on Facebook, of course. And go ahead and join. uh, Go ahead and follow. Go ahead and do whatever you want to do with it. Just be nice uh, and and give. They have uh, a place where you can donate. Yep. And if you don't have any money, but you got, you know, a uh, little we'll energy. Take volunteers. You got a little energy, right? Um, go on and get your hands dirty. Do some gardening. Yep. Uh, and, uh, you know, commute with Mother Nature, for goodness yes. sake. It's beautiful. That is. You guys are doing a great job. It's the last green space. We tell everybody it's the last green space in Puerto Vallarta. That's right. Because it got smoked. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for doing what you're doing. Thanks Thank for coming you. on the show. Thank Thanks you. for uh, introducing yourselves to my audience. I Thanks. truly appreciate it. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, Sonny. Uh, next, next, we're going to go to East La Quale, and we're going to the Cultural Center to talk with my friends. Uh, they're artists. Their names are Kika Gomez and Ernesto Garagos. Uh, and when I asked Kika if she wanted to do this interview in Spanish or English, she said, I would prefer to do it in Spanish. And as I looked over at Ernesto, I said, what about you, Ernesto? Ernesto said, I'll do it in English. So that helped me out a little bit. I only had to translate for one, not for two. So, uh, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I was kind of excited about a new tool that I found, uh, that through, you know, uh, AI, through artificial intelligence, uh, I could generate a female voice that I could, you know, put right over Kika's voice, who's speaking in Spanish, and then the female voice would be talking, you know, in English over her voice. But the problem was that that just didn't sound good. I mean, she kept on saying Puerto Puerto Vallarta, and others, there was, she just butchered a bunch of Spanish words, you know, this this artificial intelligence that's supposed to be so cool. Anyway, I looked over at my wife and I said, "Um, would you read Kika's part for me? And she said, sure. So thanks for that, Debbie. So anyway, so let's go right now. Let's go to the island. Let's go to the cultural center on Isla Quale. 
And let's meet a very lovely couple of artists, Kika Gomez and Ernesto Garagos in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, Kika, Ernesto, muchísimas gracias. Thanks for coming on the show today. Gracias a ti, Vir. Gracias a ti, gracias a ti. Thanks to you and for being here with us. Uh, it's, my, it's my pleasure, mi placer. Este, all right, uh, Ernesto, ¿por qué no uh, empezamos contigo? Uh, dígame, de, uh, where are you from? Uh, where I'm from, este, from a city that uh, is called San Luis Potosí. Maybe have you heard about it? Oh, yeah. And I have been almost all my life in Puerto Vallarta, more than 35 years old here. 35? Well, 35 years. Uh, in Puerto I'm 44. Vallarta. I'm 44. I arrived here when I was nine years old. Perfect. All right. Kika, de donde eres? I am from Compostela, Nayarit, and I have lived here in the Bahia de Banderas and Vallarta area for about 20 years. Alrededor de 20 años. 20 years. 20 sí. years living in Puerto Vallarta, or on the bay, right? In Bahia, yes. or that. Por, hay otro partes, other parts here that you live? Mezcales y Vallarta. Ah, ok. Uh, ¿Qué piensas en Mezcales? En Mezcales, bueno, ha, ha crecido mucho en los últimos años. Mezcales. Ah, it has grown a lot in recent years. I've known it since I was a little girl because my grandparents lived there, so we came to visit it during the vacation season, and it was just the area where the church square is. Only on one side of the road, and well, I was quite surprised how it has grown in recent years. It's unrecognizable from what I remember when I was a child. Me ha sorprendido bastante cómo ha crecido en los últimos años. Está irreconocible a lo que yo me acuerdo cuando era niña, pues. Como todo el mundo, ¿verdad? Sí, pero está bien que haya... It is good that there is development, that there is growth. I think that culturally, yes, uh, well, speaking of art and culture, I think that in Bahia we need much more development in getting out the word about art events in comparison to here in Vallarta. Desarrollo, difusión, eventos de arte a comparación de aquí de Vallarta. Este, y San Luis Potosí, ¿cómo está? How's, what's the city like? What is San Luis Potosí like? Well, well San Luis Potosí es una, es a city very old, uh, uh, and it's very colonial, well, has some uh, uh, colonial style, because uh, it used to be a, a very rich uh, city, uh, a lot of gold, a lot of silver. And the name of Potosí is for the, a comparison with Peru, the, no, Bolivia. That is a, a hill, a mountain that called Potosí. There used to be a lot of silver. And when the Spains come to Mexico, they discovered in San Luis Potosí There is a hill that named San Pedro that they compare like Potosí in, Boli mm. in Bolivia. Bolivia. So they, they call San Luis Potosí. And there's a lot of, it's a, a city that has museums, uh, art, schools, very important, uh, culture. But uh, well, when, when I was a child, I moved to Vallarta, so I, I know much in contact with that city. Yeah. But yeah. Is it, is I, I go once in a while. Is it, uh, is it a safe city to visit? It's a safe city to visit. Obviously, you are visiting Mexico, uh, but you need to visit with uh, local people, preferably, and go to the tourist places. But uh, it's safe to, to, to go. Safe to travel to San yeah, Luis Potosí. San Luis Potosí. All right. Well, I have to put it's it on interesting my, city. Put it on my schedule. We'll have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the interesting thing that has San Luis Potosí is that uh, around the city, there are interesting places. For example, if you listen about Real de Catorce, that is a city very famous in, in the world. And other uh, places around the city is jungle too, like here. Uh -huh. uh, so it's tropical. Yeah, yeah, the half of the states is uh, 
dry and the other half is is este jungle and humid and waterfalls very wonderful yeah it's an interesting trip okay i recommend a lot all right well you know you guys you know it's really easy to get on a plane in mexico and travel within mexico and it's very inexpensive so for all you people who spend the winters here and spend three months and you want to kind of you know mix things up san luis potosi there's another there's another place for you um tell us about the cultural center um would you like to start uh, Kika? Sí, bueno aquí en el centro cultural vallartense yo tengo eh, aproximadamente seis años well here at the Vallarta Cultural Center, I have approximately six years here. Before, I also worked here on the island in another gallery that was on the other side where the area of the handicraft market is, and Ernesto already knew it several years before. He found me here in the Cultural Center one day that I was passing by. Well, he invited me to participate here in the Cultural Center. And, well, we talked. I began to come here, and we began to organize events with the artistic community. We have worked a lot during these years. Oh, I don't know, about 20 exhibitions of art, helping different artists, from local artists who are starting, emerging national artists, and foreign artists as well. And currently, apart from the cultural center of Vallarta, we are working with the residents here from Gringo Gulch, from Colonio Emiliano Zapata, and from other neighborhoods. Sometimes they come to work to support us, rather as volunteers. We are working hard in the, well, the care and the maintenance of La Isla since last year when Hurricane Nora happened. A veces vienen a trabajar, bueno, apoyarnos más bien como voluntarios. Estamos trabajando arduamente en la, la eh, mantenimiento de la isla desde el año pasado que sucedió lo del de huracán Nora. Yes, that's right. And we were here just a few months ago talking with Guy Weeks and Guy was explaining the, uh, the work that's being done here on uh, la isla by volunteers. Um, Ernesto, I just, when I came walking up here, Ernesto had a rake in his hand and he was, uh, you know, he was walking around and he was working. Um, tell us a little bit about your volunteers. Okay, well, este, eh, Centro Cultural Vallartense, CCV, have been working here in a, a small space in the island, a little corner, um, uh, planting medicinal plants and fruit plants and other things like that. But after the hurricane, uh, another uh, project starts to coming up, and it's islacuale.org, that our friend Guy Weeks uh, is the head of that project, this project that we belong to. And, and pues we are pr uh, projects that uh, we... The vision is take care of the island. No? In the cultural center, we uh, are focused more in, in start to a schedule of art classes, uh, different kinds of classes. Uh, now we have four. Uh, later, we we want to uh, have more and more mm -hmm. uh, outside in the park. And Isla Cualeor, the vision is uh, support leaders support volunteers and make beautiful all the area uh, so it's a bigger project and with more people is involved so these volunteers uh, that help the cultural center uh, are helping in some way to keep the cultural activities and this lacuale.org is focused and, and make more beautiful the park uh, is and I can and I can say that very proud and very uh, that uh, you, the expats, people, American, Canadian from other parts of the world, uh, put the eyes on the park, and they are helping with money, they are helping with plants, they are helping donate uh, tools, they are happy with hands. 
and it's a really beautiful project because the community start to to participate more and more and there and obviously there are some Mexicans instead of there are some Mexicans too and we employ people too uh, people workers uh, and well little by little I know that uh, for handle that project uh, t it needs a lot of uh, a lot of resource and the government is participating too not much but it's participating yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and little by little I think we are making community and this morning we received a group of students and mm -hmm. later we want to invite more schools you know the idea is the community uh, uh, watch the park more and participate because it's the last green space that we have in the heart of Puerto Vallarta absolutely is and what a what a difference it's made. You know, when I was here right after Hurricane Nora, it was a mess. It was awful. It was buried in sand. Yeah. And everything was covered in mud. And uh, the difference is like night and day. It's amazing. And la, la lluvia is aquí. You know, it's, it's wonderful. Now your plants are getting watered for free, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Sí. The, the rains help us a lot, you know? Yeah, but it really greened it up, you know? It, it made a difference. It, it was very, it was a stark difference from when I was here oh. in, in April, actually. It that's made cool. a big difference, yeah. Um, all right, so, uh, 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 ¿qué clases tienen aquí? Tell me, what classes do you have here? Currently, we have activities every Saturday. The workshops we have are watercolor classes. We also have pencil portrait classes. And also we have experimental painting classes. And this Saturday, August 20th, a new Alibrije workshop begins. Ah, all right. What do you make? Oh, I make the eyes of God and knitted mandalas. Mandalas, okay. Sí. Okay, um, they're with string, right? You use yarn? Or? Sí, se elaboran yes, con they are made with colored threads and are woven around a wooden structure. Tejiendo alrededor de una estructura de madera. ¿Qué es la significa? Tienen un significado, los ojos de Dios, más que nada, es... What is the significance? The meaning of the eyes of God, more than anything, is a very important meaning for the culture and roots of Baratica or Huicholes. Originally, they were called Baratica, and for them, for example, the eye of God, in the shape of a cross, represents the Huichol nation, the cardinal points where their main ceremonial centers are located. The center of the cross is always larger because it is the area where they are located that covers part of the state of Jalisco, Nayarit, Durango. The diamond shapes that are at the ends represent the one that is above, represents the Wurikuta ceremonial center in San Luis Potosi. The one below represents the ceremonial center called Isla de Alacranes, and that's in Jalisco. The one on the good side, yes, I have it on the left side, it represents Tate Haramara, which is in San Blas, Nayarit. And the one on the right side represents the other ceremonial centers found in the state of Durango. Quien conoce? Wow. All right. <laughs> Mucha significa. Lots sí, of different, you know, but very, very specific. And right? another sí, meaning sí. is as a protection amulet for newborn children. They are made from the time the child is born until they are five years old. And when the child turns five, they go to the ceremonial center of the Haramara in San Blas. They give an offering. Then they return to their community, and from the age of five, they begin to teach the children, depending on the skills they see in each child. Well, some had to learn crafts with beads, others had to learn embroidery, others the eyes of God, others the mexicas. The mexicas are those 
boards with wax eh, and paint, you can say with thread. Niño, pues I don't know if you have seen it around. They are very, very, very classic. Also, you will see them in the stores where Huito art is sold. But it is very important to emphasize, well, that in the native Huito worldview, the art that I know, their work has a spiritual meaning. It's not craft as we see it, or something decorative for them. They have spiritual and religious meaning, not in the Christian sense, but of the beliefs that they have. Pero es muy importante recalcar pues que en la cosmovisión birrarica, lo El arte que ellos elaboran tiene un significado espiritual, no es artesanía como nosotros lo vemos o algo decorativo. Para ellos todo todo lo que hacen tiene un significado espiritual y religioso se puede decir, no en el sentido cristiano, sino de, de las creencias que ellos tienen. Bueno, muy bien, muy bien, perfecto. Y Ernesto, you you said something that um, got my attention. So you were growing medicinal plants here before uh, the hurricane? So what kind of medicinal plants? What are we talking about there? Well, este, you know, in the in the Mexican tradition, uh, we have a very uh, antique tradition in Mexico for medicinal. The, uh, we take the plants like medicinal and we used to have here uh, names like ruda, uh, arnica, uh, hoja santa, uh, mastranzo, uh, cañuela, micle, for say something, no? Uh, and uh, pues after the when the during the hurricane we lost most of them it all went away are you gonna are you gonna do that again uh, we did some we we are uh, uh, reestablish another uh, este, plants the same one that I told you right now and the idea is have more uh, in the past we had the problem too that people uh, st steal them yeah yeah but now uh, the government is helping us a lot with security that we need to say thanks uh, with this new government we have more security more police in the park uh, and people is understanding that uh, the party is for everybody that's right the, uh, the, their little private party is over the party is for the whole <laughs> island right <laughs> yeah <laughs> and medicinal plants are coming uh, more and more uh, so later when we uh, when the rain season finishes we want to start to make a little tours for the medicinal plants and make uh, some classes for the people and answer you your question more uh, why, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are they all because for? Because I'm not expert in this, in this subject. I, I tell you the truth. My friend, the engineer Jorge Madrigal, is the expert in these subjects. So he can... Later you can talk with him and he can give yeah. you more info about it. And, and later, another day, we invite you a little tour for the plants. Now we are, have no the conditions because we are cleaning, we are moving more rocks. Uh, and start, uh, we want to finish the rain, all the plane, the first step, be done with the plants. You know, like you yeah. said before, because now we need to uh, uh, use the rain in our favor to uh, plan, you know, and yeah. like we are volunteers, so it's hard work because uh, we need to invest part of our time and and live and make our jobs. Yeah, Kika, you, have, and yeah, you both volunteer. have real jobs, right? Yeah, yeah. we have jobs. ¿Qué haces? ¿Qué es tu trabajo? Ah, bueno, mi trabajo aquí en el centro what cultural. Do you do? Is well, no, my no, job no, no. here in the cultural center. No, no, uh, aside from here. Oh, besides. I dedicate myself to art 100% painting. Painting on canvas, in murals to create the eyes of God, and woven mandalas as well. Also workshops in some hotels or special events. Why? Well, art is my life. Perfecto. All right. Very good. All right. So if you want to have a, a nice mural painted, I'll bet you that Kika could do that for you, right? Is that right, Kika? Yes, yes. Okay, see, it's a yes, yes. I'll put some of her art in the in the show notes so you can see uh, her murals. They're really pretty. 
She uses a lot of hearts. I don't know if you noticed. She uses a lot of hearts, right? Muchas corazones. What do you do, Ernesto, when you're not working here? Well, in the same uh, way uh, Kikas, I, I live from the art too. I used to study administration, business, when I went to the university. And later I used to sell curtains and blinds and later deco, contractor. And later I changed my mind to be an artist. And now I have like 12 years living from the art. And the same thing, commissions, the murals, and the and the private projects, or restaurants, or you know, uh, different kind of jobs right. uh, that that uh, are painting, mm -hmm. canvas too, uh, classes too. For the Saturdays, I give a class here. Okay, and that's the the my life. A style living, you know, it's the only way that we live. And, and about the the project of the park and the cultural center, we saw social service. But uh, with the time, we want that be sustainable, and people like you help us to visualize what we are doing, and people can come and take a classes and help us with us. And, keep, and later when the tour be ready, they can come and have a tour and have, a, you know, buy some piece of art and help the project. You know, that's, but that's the way that we are supporting this. Yeah, project. well, you got, you're both artists. That's really nice. Yeah. So, um, so I will have samples of your art, too. I'll have them in the show notes so you can look at them as well. You can find them at www.portobayartotravelshow.com uh, in this particular episode. And I'll have pictures also of the progress from the island that you'll have as well. Okay, so you do classes. You do classes here, um, making these beautiful mandalas. Yes. Uh, you do art classes here, Ernesto. Yeah. Any other types of classes or things happening here at the cultural center that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, sure. Uh, now we start with these four. Uh, classes that we have right now Saturdays you know uh, we are in open space and with the rains we cannot plan yeah, too much yeah you can't plan yeah but in the time we are planning uh, make more classes schedule more classes uh, in the dry season in the high season like everybody says and our goal for this year is 10 classes uh, complete 10 classes in December in the next year uh, we are looking uh, with, in alliance with islacuale.org, have uh, more than 30 classes uh, or workshops in the park. So, uh, obviously now we need, uh, we are planning make in islacuale.org, that guy is the head, uh, uh, planning uh, make benches uh, for classes and and furniture organic in the park for you know people can have a seat because it's a big problem moving furniture chairs yeah, carrying yeah. and and we don't have a, 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 a big infrastructure and now after right. the COVID another reason that we realize is that after COVID people prefer activities outdoors yeah they do it's why they come here. They come to Puerto Vallarta because almost everything is outdoors, which is great. You yeah. know, these birds are really great for background. This is excellent. I like this. <laughs> yeah, Kika is expert in birds, so maybe she can tell you what birds come oh, right, what, to the What island. bird is that, uh, Kika? Um, uh, the pues one that is heard the loudest is a chacha, chachalaca. Or varios que andan por ahí. It's a chachalaca. 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 Sí. Chachalaca. Okay, I gotta I write that down. Y también podemos escuchar or several los that are out there, and also we can hear the parrotlets. Pero sí me, me I love it here too. Identifying the birds that I see, there are some that I do not know, but I take a picture of them and I see their characteristics, and then I search the internet. Pues les tomo foto, veo sus características, y después busco en internet. Google. Nuestra, sí. yeah, nuestra amiga. Uh, Google. Google is your friend. Bueno. Yes, yes. 
And I have a list of the birds I have seen on the island. Uh, yeah, bueno, muy bien. Are there problems with the iguanas and your plants? Yes. Eventually they may eat many of the plants, but the truth is that it gives us great joy to see them walking and climbing the trees, and we like to see the iguanas here. comen muchas de las plantas, pero la verdad nos da mucha alegría verlas caminando y trepando a los árboles y nos gusta ver a las iguanas aquí. Uh, okay, uh, very good because well, this is the island of the cats and cats are dangerous for the iguanas, right? Sí, este, this is a controversy, Sabia, that you are talking about. Oh no, 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 let's not go there then. <laughs> yeah, but uh, finally, after many years, uh, guy weeks. Uh, and I recognize that he's very hard worker and very hard, uh, very good leader. He uh, talked with the people that cat lovers, and finally they understood that the island, the 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 cats don't belong to the island, and they are helping us to move the the cats to another safe places. And they are participating too hard. Uh, taking care of the baby cats that people uh, abandoned them, yeah, here. Them, yeah. uh, today we're gonna print some signs for put all over the island to that abandoned cats. It's a it's a crime, and we are starting to uh, work with the government too, little by little, tiny steps to make campaigns around the neighborhood. Uh, and change that paradigm about the cats don't belong to the island because now the population, the cats, thanks to Guy and thanks to the uh, to the people that cat lovers, uh, thanks to them, uh, cats are, re are relocating, mm -hmm. and and now the population of cat it's at less in the half. Yeah. And we are moving in that direction the next months. Uh, takes time, but with education, with campaign, with the participation of the citizens and the neighbors, uh, I think going to be possible that reduce the minimum the cat's population uh, in the island. Obviously, we are very clear that say that we uh, are opposite to euthanasia and... and kill cats and you know we respect that the life in all kinds of life and I think this campaign is part of that no respect the life uh, the most life in the isla quale is nature yeah. birds uh, butterflies uh, iguanas of, of course because yeah the cats uh, is th they have the instinct to to kill uh, uh, other other animals. Things that move. Little yeah. things that move. They are hunters. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's not their fault, you know. It's just, uh, it's just uh, they are victims of a society that they don't understand sometimes. And now that paradigm changed and now we are very happy. And the Air Force are, like I told you before, I, I, from Guy Weeks that uh, is the leader of islaquale.org and so we are happy with that that's good yes i did notice that there is there is a reduction of the cats here on the island i did notice that as well um all right is there something else that you wanted to talk about about uh the cultural center or can we ask you a couple other questions that kind of leave the island for a minute no, you you can do it. You 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 can ask whatever. Well, I know, but I just want to know if you got anything else you wanted to add. All right. So this is what I call the bonus round. This is the part where I ask my uh, the people that I am interviewing where they like to eat because my listeners they're always looking for new places and they want they're interested especially in where people who live here eat. And where they like to eat, maybe their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Kika, ¿tienes un restaurante favorito para desayunar? Para desayunar, eh, 
For breakfast, if I have several favorite restaurants, one of them is Cafe de Oya, another is Soko's Place, and mm, what other place? Well, I also like to go to the vegetarian buffet. Vegetarian, it's Planet Vegetariano. Al buffet vegetariano. Buffet qué? Vegetariano. Planeta Vegetariano. Ah, plan- oh, Planeta Vegetariano. Oh, conozco que sí, 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 sí. All right, yes, yeah, so you like to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. Para su salud. Chew. Kika is very pretty, okay? So, you know, she <laughs> she eats the little things and all that good stuff. <laughs> Ernesto, ¿tienes un favorito también? Yeah, este, we, for example, around here, uh, breakfast. This morning we had breakfast in Soko's Place. I don't know if you live in the na- Emiliano Zapata neighborhood. You yeah. know it's a little corner that they have a good breakfast for... It's, it's a good price. A good price. Hey, when you go to Soko's place, what do you order? Oh, I order my huevos rancheros, chilaquiles, or omelette uh, with champignones. Uh huh. Kika, what do you order when you está allá? Chilaquiles. Chilaquiles. I really like green chilaquiles. And also, yes, lots of coffee. I like to yes, coffee. You need <laughs> coffee. Because it's refilled, refilled. You can refill oh, the lime. Oh, right. Oh, perfecto. <laughs> yes, yes, also the spinach omelet. Espinaca. Sí, sí. Es, oh, oh, uh, omelette? Mm-hmm. Oh, bueno. Spinach and, omelet. Okay, yeah. And, Once again, she's eating vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the lunch... I want to tell you that uh, I like to go to the Granero. The Granero it's a big place that there is happy hour. Uh, tell me about the happy hour at El Granero. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. Todos los días de 4 a 6. Okay, so 4 yeah. to 6 they have happy hour. Okay. Este, yeah, the Granero is a big big restaurant uh, that they make uh, brewing. You know, they make beer. Yeah, beer, yeah. Good, good beer. And from four to six, they have the the beer, quality beer, just for 40 pesos every day, including Sundays. Nice. And the pizza is good. I like burger. I like, uh, you know, I like many, many things on the menu. Uh-huh. And sometimes we have our... War meetings there, you know. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> and, right? <laughs> uh, and you know, and happy hour, a couple beers is okay for relaxing. Of course, yes. Of and course, it is. You know, you're allowed, Ernesto. It's and good. it's healthy the beer, you know. Yeah, because yeah. I don't like the <laughs> commercial beers. You no, know? Tiene azúcar. <laughs> no sugar, <laughs> and it's got hops and barley. You know yeah. what else? It's got to be good, right? It's got to yeah. be good for you. And uh, in the dinners, yeah. you know, sometimes dinners around, uh, we go to uh, Senaduria Celia. 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 Did you know that place? Si, it's in Lazaro Cárdenas, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we go there when we are very hungry because we don't dinner too much. I learn from Kika, uh, be healthy. Uh-huh. I learn from Kika, be healthy, more healthy and... And uh, we don't dinner too much, but uh, st- when we are hungry, we are with Celia or a chulo tacos, you know, tacos yeah. de cabeza. De cabeza, yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, st- and, well, that's that's all. And we when we are not hungry, we just buy fruit in the morning and we eat in the night a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, very good. All right, well, you both. Like good boy. <coughs> you just uh, <laughs> vegetal milk and just a couple cookies and that's all. You're a good boy. That's <laughs> right. You're a good boy. <laughs> uh, um, how about for dulces? Where do you like to have like a dessert? Kika? Um... I know she's all. I eat healthy. No, 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 coma. No. Oh yeah, I bet you do, right? <laughs> Ay, es que un señor que uh-huh. vende postres en en su en la calle con en, con su. Oh, he's okay. a French guy that oh, are walking with. Oh, I know the guy. He's got pies. Yeah, the pie he man. Has pie, yeah. The pie the little man, French the pie guy. Man, the, ah. You know, if that guy could speak English, <laughs> I would be talking with him. My French is awful. So, okay. but I yesterday I actually said, "How's your English?" He's all. No, a, no. But yeah, he makes the greatest pies. You're sí, right, Kika. Sí, están muy ricos todos sus pies. And churros, churros, obviously. Oh, Churro yeah. man. 
Churro Man. Churro Man. Churro Man. Churro Man. Corner, next to the corner, next to the church. Um, and that's the church up on uh, Lazaro Cardenas. It's the one, uh, what is it called? Se llama que? Este Iglesia. ¿Cómo se llama? Eh, La Santa la Cruz. Cruz. La Santa Cruz, right. Yeah, in the church. Right. And yesterday, I, well, I want to tell you that we ate at cholera, seafood, you know? Uh-huh. That's very popular. Uh, it's our friend Marco, and you can eat there mariscos for good prices. Or Balam, that is another friend that yeah, Tony. Uh, makes seafood sí. in yeah. the neighborhood. So that's uh, our favorite uh, seafood places in the neighborhood. I like those. Uh, my favorite too. Bonito yeah. Kitchen también nos gusta uh, ir a cenar ahí. Ah, Bonito sí. Kitchen yeah, is for more special dinners. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. yeah, no, they've got a beautiful new place. Los yeah. cocktails. Very good. Yeah, los cocktails son perfectos, really. Yes. Yeah, sure. Healthy, right? Sí. Yeah, 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 healthy. yeah. Lleno de salud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, If you were going to take a day off and go somewhere just for the day and come back, I don't give us. Well, we make different plans. Sometimes we go to. Uh, we work hard and was uh, sleeping all day, you know? Oh, that's <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. In the Domingo's ocean, a good day, huh? watching movies or go to the ocean or, or walk a little for the river. Or visit mom. Or sometimes we go the weekend uh, with friends around towns, you know. Okay, so that's you don't really like go off somewhere. Yeah. Pues, see, if you had three days to go somewhere and come back, where would you go? Ah, ya dónde iría yo? Yo creo que. I think one day for me, Compostela. Un día a Compostela. Sí. ¿Dónde, uh, ¿Qué está en Compostela? Eh, pues es un pueblo tranquilo, no es, no es muy grande, tampoco es un pueblo muy well, chico. Well, it's a quiet town. Eh, it's not very big, but at the same time not very small. It's been a pueblo mágico for several years. Eh, well, you can find simple activities such as public pools. It is a very large area where they have a small kiosk and they have a grill. They have benches so families can go and bring everything they want, their food to prepare there in the grills. They also have a wooden game for children, a pool for adults and children, and well, Compostela is an area with springs. The pools are filled with natural water from a spring that is there. And in the same area of pools, there is a stream and a small lake. The lake is good for people used to walking around the lake. They can go jogging or they can go... Well, they can also go with friends, and there are also some very famous shaved ice there, too. El Manatil, they are called. And when I go to Compostela, we also like to go to Tepic. In Tepic, there is a market where I can buy some huicho art. But I also like to go in the other direction from Bayarta. I like very much El Tuito. I like very much also. We used to go a couple of times a year to a turtle camp near Tomatlan. It was called Mahuas. This camp is like an island. In order to get there, you take a panga. And there are no lights, no potable water. You have to bring in the water with you too. It's a big adventure. No, no, I got nada. Yeah, wow. But it's very pretty. Es, muy cerca de you know, I never hear about Compostela. It's my first time that I've never known. It's very close to here from Bayarta. They are approximately, well, right now with the traffic, from here to there with the traffic, well, it takes you an hour to leave Bayarta, around two hours and a half or three hours and a half if you go from the center of Bayarta right. yeah, with the traffic. Sí. Yeah, it's a very antique city. It's Compostel. just ama- yeah, when with uh, you know all these uh, all the all the pools and the natural pools and it just sounds sounds very interesting. Yeah. También me gusta ir a, al rancho de mi mamá. Se llama bueno aquí lo conocemos como cañadas. 
está cerca de San I also like to go to my mom's ranch. It's called, well, here we know it as Cañadas. It's close to San Juan de Bajo, here in the Bahia de Banderas. Oh, yes, I've heard of that. In this place, there are spas with hot springs. The town is called Nuevo Ixlan, but the people around, it, around us know it as Cañadas. And since there is no cell phone signal, then one relaxes because they are not aware of the cell phone, and they admire nature. You can go to the hot springs and then to the rivers nearby now in the rainy season. So it's all about relaxing. relajante. Mm-hmm. Excelente. Perfecto. Um, si alguien viene a Vallarta para la primera vez, someone comes to Vallarta for the first time, what kind of of um, advice would you give to someone who's coming here for the first time? Other than vis- visita este, este the central cultural center over here on the island. Mm-hmm. Sí. Yeah. What would you tell them? Um, well, I we always say to the people that this is the last green space that we have in the heart of Puerto Vallarta. That is a unique park on the very special park because no in all the cities the parks the parks is the the rivers go around the you know a, around a park uh-huh. it's like our uh, central park you know yeah and este and we say that we uh, uh, have iguanas birds is a natural reserve and and well I it's a difficult question because it's for that that we are working hard for make this space more special because you know uh, uh, and I think need to say that the last authorities never put too much attention on the park and when people start to come and say why is the park abandoned you know yeah oh yeah now community is taking care of the park the new government is trying to help more uh, and i think uh, it's a good uh, moment to think what is the next step and where uh, what we want to say you know yeah in the future yeah because uh, pues, uh, it's a beautiful spot need more love it I does think. it does well, it's getting a lot of love right now and it's because of people like you and people like guy and then all of the volunteers i know that the garden club is helping i know that there's all kinds of help that's finally coming because i think people can see that there's a big difference a yeah. big big difference and they can see that their donations are counting you know that it actually is making a difference So, I, you know, you guys are, I think you guys are great. Um, is there, let's come back to the park. Is there anything else that um, you want to talk about here? Or are we, or um, anything else that you want to say about what's going to happen or? Okay, uh, well, as the, we first, we want to say thanks. Uh, thanks for visiting us and oh, thanks yeah. for this interview that is very special for us. Uh, and we want to say thanks to the leaders that after the hurricane uh, start to see the park and with their expertise their talent and their vision we start to make a community and you are invited to be a leader of communication if you want once in a while visit us I'd be happy to do that you know you can always send me information and I'll share it with my listeners so and this is the beginning on a big thing uh, this is the beginning of a nice history uh, we are making a documentary of this uh, because this history is happening uh, it never happened before because we have seven years he's working in the little cultural center and it's the first times after the hurricane you know bad thing the hurricane that the good thing is that the people start to think about it 
because we saw the park, like you say, a mess with sand, destroy, and I think touch the heart of the people, and the people start to act, and and that is a nice history. And later, the new the new plans that we have for the park in the community, uh, that the government is agree and is happy. So uh, it's the beginning. Next step, that I told you, more classes, more cultural activities. Uh, we want to have a Los Muertos Festival. Kika can tell you more about it. Great. And after Los Muertos, we want to have, like I told you before, more uh, classes, different kind of classes. And we have the vision that teach to the children and the schools the importance of the ecology. Because, for Wonderful. example, in Puerto Vallarta, we don't have ecological uh, center. We don't have uh, a space for a, a environment education. And I think this is, can be the best classroom ever for do that to the children. Yeah, oh yeah. And that is the long way vision or in the, in the way we want to go in that direction and i gonna say thanks to my my friend kika obviously that is my wife my partner my este uh, i want to say thanks to jorge madrigal for years working with us i want to say thanks to cesar corona that is working in movies every saturday for many years i want to say thanks um uh, uh, the Institute of Cultures the belong to the municipality that help us and let us work. Uh, I want to say thanks to Guy Wicks, that is the leader of IslaQuale.org, that he start to move bigger the project with the IslaQuale.org that is the, that he found. Um, and uh, other friends like. Uh, uh, the Senora Sunny Rossi, that she has been investing too much money in plants and flowers. I want to say thanks to Dr. Meads that invests money uh, and work for uh, materials and labor. I want to say thanks to Susan Fontaine that is taking care of the money and the contability and she's going to be our fundraiser. I want to say thanks to Greg Taruk, that is uh, uh, our director of art and culture, and he's going to have the first event the next Los Muertos Day, little festival. Uh, another uh, uh, part of the meeting is Stefan Holmeyer that, and, and his wife, Ada, that they uh, give us a lot of... Uh, advices and 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 he uh, is has a lot of expertise and give a solution for different things mm -hmm. and so many people if i forget somebody just is the is the, is the uh, they are the leaders that i making the difference and we are just making a little thing too and everybody i think with everybody works and uh, make difference, you know? Yeah, well, you are. Everybody's making a difference. Many hands, many hands are helping. The more helping hands, the better. And, um, and I was amazed, Kika, at the picture that you sent out on Facebook with all of these people. I mean, you had a big group today. I was, I was so impressed. Do you get that many people on off-season to come here? It's pretty, and you know, in the middle of August when it's not really that comfortable to be working, mm -hmm. you guys really did a great job. Um, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Kika, Ernesto, thank you so much. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for uh, taking your time and talking with me and allowing me to introduce you and this beautiful island and the cultural center here in Puerto Vallarta on Isla Quale. 
to my listeners. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Gracias a ti también, Bert. No, thanks to you too much. And, and I want to say thanks to uh, uh, people that is listening, taking time to, <laughs> to listen to <laughs> the podcast. And, este, and well, thanks to the school Arcos, the high school Arcos that came today for the first time. 50 boys and girls. Yeah, all right, uh, volunteers from they school. Gran numero de yeah, de they're going to come once in a while to help. They're going to join to the project. And I want to say thanks to the director of tourism, uh, Ludwin Estrada, that he gave us all the permissions. I want to say thanks to uh, John McKinnon, the Vallarta Gardens, that he's putting some interesting projects on the road. Uh, I want to say thanks to the mayor, that the mayor is happy, that is happening here, obviously. And government people like uh, uh, director of Servicios Públicos Municipales, Chon Callejas, and many, many uh, people of the municipality that is starting to help too um, and well so little by little step by step uh, Isla Kuala is gonna be uh, more beautiful and remember is our last green space in the hair of Puerto Vallarta yes right and you are helping to make it the jewel in the heart of Puerto Vallarta And uh, I think with more people seeing all the work that's being done and the progress and how beautiful it's becoming, you're going to get more people that are going to be coming down not only to visit, but to help and to contribute. And so I'll also have uh, Guy Weeks' information in the show notes uh, for you if you want to uh, donate to the project. You'll find it, of course, at www.portofiartotravelshow.com. All right, you too. Well, muchísimas gracias otra vez. Gracias a y, ti. Y uh, thanks very much for coming on. Keep on going on. You're doing a great job. Oh, gracias. Gracias a ti otra vez. Este, bienvenido. Well, welcome whenever you want. And we wish that you be uh, often here talking with all the group, all the rest of the people that they can share with you their point of view their vision too and thanks thanks too much to the people that is listening all right thank you kika thank you ernesto great information great information from locals i love that uh i'm gonna have pictures uh, from of some of their work you'll find them over in the show notes I'll have their contact information there, too, uh, if you happen to have an art project for them, right? I also have information for uh, Amigos de la Isla Quale, the green heart of Puerto Vallarta. Uh, you can find that in the show notes, as well as information for the Vallarta Garden Club, too. Okay, I want to include everybody here. Maybe you all should think about getting involved as well. It's amazing what they've done there. I've got pictures of the island in the show notes. Check it out for sure if you can. All right. Uh, that should do it for today. Uh, next week, stay tuned for more on the ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with travel tips, great restaurant excursion ideas, and more. But until then, just remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and your suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, well, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to ViartaInfo.com. That's JR's website. Reserve your tour right through him, right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that... You would do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying, Thank you, JR. Thanks for being our guy. It costs no more than if you're going to use someone else. So do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or maybe didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. 
And don't forget, he's got his maps, his DIY tours, his revitalized happy hour board, and more. And I have links to all of those in the show notes as well. And once again, if you like this podcast, please take the time and subscribe, follow, share with a friend, lover of Puerto Vallarta, or give me a good review wherever you happen to be listening. That way, we get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And remember, I made it easy for you to do just that each episode I create. But if you haven't been to my website, you really need to have a look there. I have links to the places that we talk about, interesting pictures and more, all right there in my blog post and in the show notes for each episode of the show. So check them out for sure if you haven't already. All right? All right. Uh, thanks so much to Kika Gomez and Ernesto Garagos from the Vallarta Isla Quale Culture Center. Uh, check out their classes as things get into full swing around high season. And hey, thanks so much to Mitch and Sonny. Thanks for what you're doing right there on the island. You're inspiring all of us to pitch in, lend a hand, and help preserve the Isla Quale, which is, of course, the last green space in the heart of Puerto Vallarta. And thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for you to all slow down, be kind, and live Vallarta Nos vemos, amigos. Puerto Vallarta